guys, this is Jonathan here. This is Theresa May's breaking news on her new Brexit deal, apparently. Which, we all know, you wanted to leave the European Union in 2016. Millions of people wanted to leave and uh, have our borders back and Northern Ireland. And uh, uh, we're still in the European Union. We should have left on the 12th of April. Then we should have left on 29th of March. Whatever. It's ridiculous. This is what Theresa May speak is now. I'm going to show you. I became Prime Minister almost three years ago, immediately after the British people voted to leave the European Union. My aim was and is to deliver Brexit and help our country move beyond the division of the referendum and into a better future. A country that works for everyone. Where everyone has the chance to get on in life Two seconds, guys. and go as time. far as their own talent and hard work can take them. That is a goal Just that I believe all of it in. still unite our country. I knew delivering Brexit was not going to be simple or straightforward. The result in 2016 was decisive, but it was close. The challenge of taking Brexit from the simplicity of the choice on the ballot paper to the complexity of resetting a country's relationship with 27 of its nearest neighbours was always going to be huge. While it has proved even harder than I anticipated, I continue to believe that the best way to make a success of Brexit is to negotiate a good exit deal with the EU as the basis of a new deep and special partnership for the future. That was my pitch to be leader of the Conservative Party and Prime Minister. That is what I set out in my Lancaster House speech, and that was what my party's election manifesto said in 2017. That is, in essence, what the Labour Party's election manifesto stated too. And over yeah, but the thing is, she's teamed up with Labour, Jeremy Corbyn. Parties, which stood to deliver Brexit. At least Nigel Farage Union. wants to leave the EU. We've worked hard to deliver that, but we have not yet managed it. But like, Conservatives and like Labour are messing us around. Find a way through. It's true that initially, I wanted to achieve this predominantly on the back of Conservative and DUP votes. In our parliamentary system, that is simply how you normally get things done. I sought the changes MPs demanded. I offered to give up the job I love earlier than I would like. And on 29th of March, the day we were meant to leave the EU, if just 30 MPs had voted differently, we would have passed the withdrawal agreement and we would be leaving the EU. But it was not enough. So I took the difficult decision to try to reach a cross-party deal on Brexit. Many MPs on both sides were unsettled by this. But I believe it was the right thing to do. We engaged in six weeks of serious talks with the opposition offering to compromise. But in the end, those talks were not enough for Labour to reach an agreement with us. But I do not think that means we should give up. The House of Commons voted to trigger Article 50. And the majority of MPs say they want to deliver the result of the referendum. So I think we need to help them find a way. And I believe there is now one last chance to do that. I've listened to concerns from across the political spectrum. I've done all I can to address them. And today I'm making a serious... She was looking up to the ceiling quite a lot. A new so she's fed up of doing the same bloody thing. As part of that deal, a deal, I will continue to make the case for the Conservative Party to be united behind a policy that can deliver Brexit. Nine out of ten Conservative MPs have already given the withdrawal agreement their backing, and I want to reach out to every single one of my colleagues to make the very best offer I can to them. We came together around an amendment from Sir Graham Brady, and this gave rise to the work on alternative arrangements to the backstop. Although it's not possible for those to replace the backstop in the withdrawal agreement, we can start the work now to ensure they are a viable alternative. So as part of the new Brexit deal, we will place the government under a legal obligation to seek to conclude alternative arrangements by December 2020 so that we can avoid any need. Why are they backed it to December 2020? I've also listened to union it's stupid. About Unless she's talking about or thinking so about it. the new Brexit deal goes further to address these. It will commit that should the backstop come into force, 
the government will ensure that Great Britain will stay alive. It's like we're going around in the fucking circle, Theresa May. We will prohibit the proposal. Then with Jeremy Corbyn, go around the circle. Northern Ireland off from the UK's customs territory. And we will deliver on commitments to Northern Ireland in the December 2017 joint report in full. We will implement paragraph 50 of the joint report in law. The Northern Ireland Assembly and Executive will have to give their consent on a cross community basis for new regulations betrayal. that are added to the backstop. And you guys and we will think work about betrayal. Of my partners on how these commitments should be entrenched in law. This new Brexit deal contains significant further changes to protect the economic and constitutional. It's looking up and down at the roof. Of the United Kingdom and deliver Brexit. It is a bespoke solution that answers the unique concerns. She keeps saying the same thing: deliver Brexit, deliver Brexit. She hasn't delivered Brexit. No one will back a deal. It's annoying. Secure parliamentary agreement. We will not leave the European Union. Unless we have a deal that can command cross wider cross party support. I've been in fucking limbo. That's why I sat down with the opposition. I've been serious about listening to views across the house throughout this. She process. says she's listening to us, but is she really? That's why she's taking Jeremy Corbyn's side of Labour. So I feel, and probably other people feel. To give Parliament a bigger say in the next phase of the negotiations, I listen to them. So the new Brexit deal will set out in law. If she really listened to the public and the people, she would have gone and, and ignored everybody else and just left with a deal. Instead of worrying about what other people think, leave with a deal. She's supposed to be the Prime Minister. We're presenting an example. did not reach a comprehensive agreement, we did make significant progress in a number of areas, like on workers' rights. I'm absolutely committed to the UK continuing to lead the way on this issue. Nobody wants a custom union. I, I don't want a second referendum. It's just pointless. And I'm happy to give them. So the new Brexit deal will offer new safeguards to ensure these standards are always met. We will introduce a new workers' rights bill to ensure UK workers enjoy rights that are every bit as good as or better than those provided for by EU rules. And we will discuss further amendments with trade unions and businesses. The new Brexit deal will also guarantee there will be no change in the level of environmental... She keeps saying the new Brexit deal, but uh, and we will establish what's so special about the new Brexit deal? ...office of environmental protection to uphold the highest environmental standards and enforce compliance. The new Brexit deal will also place a legal duty on the government to seek as close to frictionless trade with the EU... In we all want to leave the EU. Why betray all of us? and make us stay in the custom union. It seems stupid. In order to deliver this, the UK will maintain common rules with the EU for goods and agri-foods products that are relevant to checks at the border. This will be particularly important for our manufacturing firms and trade unions. We've got Tony Robinson and Nigel Farage, and then we can leave the European Union. They're wasting our time with Conservative and Labour. The waste of their time. The difficult area is the question of customs. At the heart of delivering Brexit, lies a tension between the strength of our ambition to seize the new opportunities that Brexit presents. And we had our trust in this woman. Everybody did, and she betrayed us. That's how I feel. With other European economies. I'm sure you guys feel the same way. This ambition should not be divisive. She's just leading us into a circle like Jeremy Corbyn, not doing anything, talking like this, talk, 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 no fucking action. That's how I feel. And yet are excited by the new opportunities that Brexit presents. Indeed, I believe one of the great opportunities of leaving the European Union is the ability. She keeps talking about leaving the European Union. We're going. She's been saying this for months and months and months and months. People are getting fed up of hearing it. Across every continent of the world. Keeps looking up to the roof as well. But I've never believed that this should come at the expense of the jobs and livelihoods. If you're a leader, we should be leaving with a deal. People will stop us leaving the European Union, but you ignore them. You lead the country. You're supposed to be the leader. Now, the government has already put a proposal. But you're making a terrible job of it, I tell you. Customs Union, but with the ability for the UK to determine its own trade and development. I mean, Donald Trump does a good job. Labour are both sceptical of our ability to negotiate that and don't believe an independent trade policy is in the national interest. They would prefer a comprehensive customs union 
with a UK say in tra EU trade policy, but with the EU negotiating on our behalf. Tony Blair and Gordon Brown got kicked if out. We're going to pass the withdrawal agreement bill and deliver Brexit. We must resolve this difference. We're not going to resolve the difference. We're going around in the fucking circle. Nobody wants a customs union. It's messing us all around, Theresa May is. And fancy teaming up with the enemy, the Labour Party. That's even worse. The Conservatives went back a day, or she teams up with the enemy. Like Labour. Jeremy Corbyn wants a customs union, wants to stay in the single market. We, d I don't. Nobody else does. Pro Remainers, I want to leave the EU. I want our country back. She, sa she says she's been listening carefully. Nobody wants a second referendum. I do not believe this is a route that we should take. Because I think we should be implementing the result of the first referendum, yep. not asking the British people to vote in a second one. Nobody wants a second I referendum. I recognise the genuine and sincere strength of feeling across the House on this important issue. The government will therefore include Seek the common ground of Parliament. Bill at introduction, a requirement to vote on whether to hold a second referendum. We've already voted once. Why would we vote the second time? Agreement. That's so stupid. And if the House of Commons were to vote for a referendum, it would be requiring the government to make provisions for such a referendum. We, we, we knew what we wanted in 2016, and we thought we were leaving, so and then we got betrayed. If you want a second referendum to confirm the deal, you need a deal, and therefore withdraw the agreement. We already had a deal, just they betrayed so us, and I'd rather listen to the pro-main Labour people and make us stay in. Finally, we cannot expect MPs to vote on the same two documents they previously rejected. So betrayal. She betrayed us, and I can't believe it. Everybody had a trust in this woman, and she wanted to go with Labour and take Jeremy Corbyn's side. It's funny that the tone changes. That's why a lot of people are angry with Theresa May. Betrayal. Three, the negotiating objectives and final treaties for our future relationship with the EU will have to be approved by MPs. Four, a new workers' rights bill that guarantees workers' rights will be no less favourable than in the EU. Ridiculous. Five, no change in the level of environmental protection when we leave the EU. She keeps saying leave the Six, EU. The we EU haven't left the EU. Where's the progress, woman? With the EU as possible while outside the single market and ending free movement. All she ever seems to say is leaving the Seven, EU. We'll to extensions of Article 50. Food products that are relevant to checks at the border, protecting the thousands of jobs that depend on just-in-time... So that's the thing what Jeremy Corbyn would say, protecting the thousands of jobs. Why can't she come up with her own ideas? She's supposed to be the leader. Why can't she do it? It's like, she, it's like impossible. If you were a leader, you do well. Will be a legal duty to secure There's always haters, but she needs to get ahead out of her ass All and deliver Brexit. Will be guaranteed it's been going on for too long. So That's why most people turn, turn the channel over. It's boring. The revised deal will deliver on the result of the referendum. And only by voting for a withdrawal agreement bill at second reading can MPs provide the vehicle Parliament needs to determine how we leave the EU. She keeps saying, the leave the EU. The the There's no progress. More action, stop. less of uh, more if talking like this. The consequences could hardly be greater. Reject this deal and leaving the EU with a negotiation. That's how I feel, guys. A lot of that, that millions of people feel they've been betrayed. At least Nigel Farage and Tony, Tony Robinson want well, to leave the EU. Conservative and Labour are not respecting the public's vote. Then it would have to be a general election or a second referendum that could lead to revocation and no Brexit at all. Who believes that a general election at this it's moment? It's like they're stupid. They don't understand anything. On what people instructed us to do is in the national interest. I do not. It's like we're going to keep paying billions of pounds to America. France or wherever it is, Germany, the but they don't seem to care. Politics. Extending it for months. All that money could be used in the UK for other things, like hospitals and curing other things. 
Look around the world and consider the health of liberal Democrat, democratic politics. And look across the United Kingdom and consider the impact of failing to deliver on the clear instruction of the British people in a lawful referendum. If you're respecting the you British people, deal, deal, Instead, do the 2016, yes, yeah, deliver Brexit then. <laughs> no action, no change, that's how it feels. I believe there is a majority to be won for a Brexit deal in the House of Commons. And by passing a deal, we can actually get Brexit. So people are so scared of leaving the European Union. If we I think so, it's going to damage the economy. Perhaps we'll be poor for 10 years or whatever. At least we've left alive. and we're built from scratch. The world is changing fast. Our young people will enjoy, enjoy opportunities in the future that my generation could never have dreamed of. This is a great time I know she's only doing her job, future, but the only thing the is, the at least respect the public. All we need as a nation to make a success of the 2020s and 2030s. But we will not do so as long as our politics remain stuck in an endless debate on Brexit. We all have to take some responsibility for the fact... They don't want to leave Brexit in Parliament because they're too scared. We'll have a responsibility what are they scared to of leaving the European Europe. Union for? England should stand on its own two it's feet. Politics. It's about time. We can fix that. With the right Brexit deal, we can they want to keep paying business. billions of billions of pounds to France all the we time. We get out of the EU political structures. The Parliament, the Commission, the Council of Ministers that are remote from our lives. They just don't seem to care about the public and us. Of our destiny. This is how the country's but going, guys. British laws being enforced by a European court and instead make our own Supreme Court genuinely It's nice to make our own laws for a change instead of getting governed by other countries. immigration system based around skills that work for our economy and society. We can stop making vast annual payments to the EU budget. So that'd be good, wouldn't it? Instead, instead, spend our own money, our own priorities, like the NHS. We can get out of the common fisheries policy and the common agriculture. It'd be nice to fish in our own waters. Our own our own but France come to our waters and take our fish. We, can we can't do that in France. Spain come to our seas and we can't come to theirs. We can do so much more besides. By reaching an agreement with our EU trading partners, we can keep tariff barriers down and goods flowing friction free across borders. Protecting jobs. Oh God, she's government. sounding more and more like Jeremy fucking Corbyn, protecting jobs to the country. With a deal, we can keep our close security partnerships. They made a leader for a reason. Why can't she fulfil her job? That's why I'm so angry, guys. You can tell. Northern Ireland and Ireland is met in a way that works for people on both sides. This is a huge opportunity for the United States. Oh, it's a huge opportunity. Yeah. Out of the EU, out of ever closer. Yeah. Free to do things she keeps backdating it. October so the thirty first apparently will be leaving the EU on Halloween. Huh. A close relationship with our and she's supposed to be kicked out in a couple of weeks, Theresa May, United June or July. Is Boris Johnson going to take the job? It is responsible. It is deliverable. Is it, Boris Johnson going to deliver right Brexit? Now, it is slipping away from us. We risk losing a great opportunity. This deal is not the final word on our future relationship with the Whereas David Cameron didn't it's deliver Brexit, did he? Reach that future. A future where the people of the UK determine the road ahead for the country we all love. This deal lays the groundwork and settles many of the core issues. But in the years ahead, Parliament will be able to debate, decide and refine the exact nature of our... This was one day ago, Theresa May's video. Some Lots of people have seen it, but some people closer. haven't. Others will want to become more dif distant. Both Brexit crisis, Master Theresa May order. says the withdrawal agreement. The, is, the bill will include will a vote or, or, or wherever, a hold of another referendum, which we don't want another referendum, do we? That is what being pissing, pissing us all around. Is all about. Those debates... Just because Jeremy Corbyn wants his way in his world over oh, a second referendum, not, not everybody does. More people want to leave than stay in the European Union. That is right us. That's what's annoying me. We're not going to find any common ground. We're going to get stuck in the EU. Over the next two weeks, the government will be making the case for this deal in Parliament, in the media and in the country. On what is best and right for our She calls herself a leader. Pathetic. I mean, I mean, 
Donald Trump wouldn't stand for something like this if it was in his country. Make a statement to the House of Commons. And there will be opportunities throughout the bill for MPs on all sides to have their say. Everybody's had their say. You want to get out of the EU. But you're not doing anything. That's what's fucking everybody off. We had our trust in you, Theresa May. All of us did. We're just taking the piss. You're going in bed with the enemy, Jeremy Corbyn, the Labour Party. So help you find a way to honour... We've helped you find a way. You chose not to listen, Theresa May, per usual. And build a better future. We're not going to build any better future. Something like Jeremy Corbyn. Thank you. That's how I feel, guys, at what Theresa May is doing. We want a second we don't want a second referendum. We've we've dealt with the first referendum. We wanted to leave the EU, but no. It's too much hassle, that's how it appears to be. This was fifty nine minutes ago of the same Brexit deal. <laughs> So we're going to wait for Theresa May to just sit on her board over there and start talking. I don't know if it's the same thing we've just watched. It could be different. It's very annoying. Or it could be from a different angle, this video. We, we, we ought to leave the European Union in 2016. Why can't they just respect the public? They can't do that, can they? It's too much to ask. That's why I get annoyed and so frustrated and I'm sure millions of other people do. That's why most people are going for a Brexit party, Nigel Farage. And, uh, you know, Tony Robinson. Because pe they've got a, a voice to speak. The people actually hear them talking. This is why I'm doing these videos. To show people that the country is just a mess. We already know it's a mess, but this is taking the piss. ridiculous the way the country is going the way the world is going i'm going to try and fast forward the video two seconds guys i'm waiting for paint to bloody dry well there we go let's get this guy talking let's see here there we go. this guy's going to speak first i think See what this guy has got to say for himself. Uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Kevin Ellis, Chairman and Senior Partner of the UK Middle East Firm. And I'm delighted to welcome this afternoon Prime Minister, Her Ministers, and representatives of the media to our offices here in Embankment Place. I know you don't want to hear from me, but just a few quick words on PwC. I mean, this is ridiculous. We've 2,000 people in the UK. And over the last year, we've recruited 2,500 school leavers. Seeking the common ground. To our buildings, <laughs> 25 offices across really? the UK. It's a special week for us because this week we opened a new office in Bradford to provide high quality jobs to the community there. Don't like make me fucking leaders, laugh. We crave certainty and stability. Therefore, I'm delighted to ask the Prime Minister to the platform now to speak about Brexit. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Kevin. I became Prime Minister almost three years ago. I've already seen this one already. I'm going to put something else on that. I don't want to watch that again. All right, so what I'm going to put on next is, I don't know what else is on here. There's loads of videos that I want to show, but uh, this is 11 hours ago. I educate myself with things that I already know and I will look into. I don't educate myself with people who are spouting hate. Hold on, did you just say you educate yourself with things you already know? Hey, you going? Are you, are you here against Tommy? You're not a supporter of Tommy? I'm a, a supporter of love and diversity and welcoming people, not hating well, people. Actually, what is it that Tommy exactly that you stand against? I just don't like what he says. I don't like his racist comments. Like what? Like what? Give me an example. About up there. What's he said now? What is, what, is, what is he said now that you have a problem with? Just everything he just said. What did he say? The way the country is going, it's going worse. <laughs> What, Never mind, what, what better. Rubbish did he just talk? Are we going to have civil war or what? 
Can you give me an example? Help them joining people together. That's what we want in but, this. But in you haven't been able to give me an example. I don't want to give you an example. I just want to tell you what I represent and what I want in this uh, this area and in this town. Okay. Love and diversity, welcoming people from all countries, all nations, all cultures, all religions. Assuming the country's a mess, as we all can see. Do you, do you believe Never that better. Uh, we should be able to criticise bad ideas? Yeah, that's why I'm criticising his bad ideas. That's, that's great. I just come and do my best to, to ask people, try and love each other. Try and love each Don't other. Don't turn that's the Robinson that. And that's because you're Christian. But the problem is what you're not understanding. This guy is Australian. For is this guy here. The head, exact head. opposite. You, you said... Voting hate. Go to, go to a mock I'm, I'm challenging you. I disagree. We disagree. We're allowed to disagree. I have, I'm a, I, have, I have no problem to disagree. Call it a free country. <laughs> firstly, when I, I pointed out oh, statistics, you said you're not interested in the statistics. When I pointed out parts within the Islamic religion... Which a free is country. Fucking laugh is stop. ...dividing of the community, then anything Tommy Robinson has ever ever in his lifetime said so you're not willing to what listen what would you like me to do about that i would like you to educate yourself well i educate myself with things that i already know and i will look into i don't educate myself with people who are spouting hate hold on did you just say you educate yourself with things you already know that is that, that... that's where i'm up to when when i learn other things then maybe my mind will change but at the moment what I know is that this planet should love each other and look after each other and let each other live and abide and be, you know, just do our best for each other. That's what that's what I think. There's that's not enough I love in the world. I, I people that love people, people, people hate people. People don't do that, but I'm just here to say, why don't we love each other? And so, you don't agree with me? No, no, I agree. I, you, you, what, what I think your problem is that I think most of that crowd agrees with you. Like, you're missing a fundamental point is that you're not willing to educate yourself on the fact that there is a whole group of, in society who don't agree with you and you're just not willing to educate there's always somebody who doesn't agree with somebody else but they're violent but they're violent there's too many wars too many people are dying yeah i agree on that too many wars are dying yeah broken apart and what's a common denominator all because of hate and what's a common denominator love what's a common denominator if we live with love what's a common denominator I agree with her on that totally. There's always wars because some pe people just don't understand one another and don't seem to understand the real picture of things in life. European Parliament elections May. Classic brings out a traditional fair in what has long been the Conservative Party's heartland in southern England. It's an ironic selection for Brexiteers, because two months after Britain was due to leave, <coughs> you, the nation, is still dancing to Europe's tune. This country just can just be ridiculous. And I think it's been going on far too long, and it's a terrible mess at the moment. A shambles. It's, it's a bit embarrassing, really. Uh, Representational. No one seems to be listening to the people of the world. Leave means leave. Have been betrayed. That is why I set up the Brexit Party. It's why we're going to fight the European elections on May the 23rd. And that is just the beginning of what is needed in this country. Please welcome to the stage, Nigel Farage. Nigel Farage formerly led the UK Independence Party, the driving force behind the 2016 Brexit referendum. He's trying to convince voters in Featherstone, a gritty town 200 miles north of London, to return him to the EU Parliament, an institution he holds in contempt. Generally, the Brits are very placid, very slow to anger, but right at the minute, they're angry. Because they're democracy. Too right, we're angry. You want to lead the referendum, Nigel Farage. You want to lead the EU. If the Nigel Farage can help us lead the EU, it'd be a great country. To the rest of the world. And yet, it's here that that's being betrayed. True. Featherstone used to be rock solid Labour Party territory. Like many former Labour strongholds across Britain, this region voted overwhelmingly in favour of Brexit. And let's make a big noise that they hear down in Westminster. What do we want? No. Allowing them to dictate the terms of our trade deals is not winning. 
Anne Widdicombe, a former prisons minister and Conservative Party veteran, is another Brexit Party candidate. She believes victory for the new party will help to ensure that Britain leaves the EU. What a world we live in. It's very important that when people look at the British delegation in the European Parliament, they see a phalanx of people determined to leave. That is very important uh, because I think there's um, a very misinformed view uh, in Brussels and Strasbourg, but it's a very misinformed view. Uh, that somehow we're not very serious about it, that Britain doesn't really want to leave. Well, that may be true of some of our leading politicians, but it's not true of the British people. Our message is that no longer are we prepared to see our great nation humiliated in front of the rest of the world. It's time we stood up, stood tall, proud of who we are, and able well, to start forging our own fresh relationships around the world, and we're going to fight on through May the 23rd and on, to make this a better, more democratic nation. Thank you. They have totally betrayed us. 17.4 million people have betrayed my the government. Up north, we don't seem to matter. I don't know what my father would think if he was still here, because he was a, a avid Labour supporter all his life. But it doesn't seem like politics anymore. It seems like corruptics. These rallies have given Farage's party... He's got that on the head, he's not laying on the head on that. Polls predict they'll get around 35%, capturing support from traditional Labour and Conservative voters. Farage's surge has panicked the two main parties. But is this a temporary or permanent shift? Quentin Letts writes about Parliament for the Times of London. I think it's probably only a moment at the moment. I, I'm very nervous about going further, because as soon as Mrs May is gone, if she ever goes... Then I think it all changes, and um, a different Conservative leader would be a very different proposition for uh, for the Brexit Party to take on. Many opponents despise Farage with this anti-immigrant poster from 2016, depicting droves of migrants heading towards Western Europe. Some critics say it resembles 1930s Nazi propaganda. Nigel Farage is, is the ultimate tactical politician in the sense that through his political career he's been in favour of a whole set of different things from fairly right-wing economic policies like selling off bits of our treasured National Health Service, but he's adapted. Professor Anand Manon of King's College London says Farage is managing to shrug off race issues during this campaign. One of the things that his former party did very well was realise there was a whole pool of left-leaning voters, Labour voters, who could be appealed to by talking about more state spending, and hey presto, that's what they did. So he's very tactical, he's very flexible. He has been defined in his career by this one issue of our membership of the European Union, and at the moment, of course, that issue is serving him well. Normally in Britain, elections for the European Parliament aren't significant at all, largely because of voter apathy. At the last round, five years ago, the turnout was less than 37%. But this time, passions are running high because of the failure of Prime Minister Theresa May's Conservative government to deliver Brexit. And if, as the polls predict, the Conservatives are humiliated at the ballot box, then Theresa May could finally lose her grip on power. No! So-called Remainers have also lost faith in the main opposition Labour Party because it's continually flip-flopped on Brexit. In fact, some Labour MPs have left and joined a new party Ridiculous. Change UK. Our politics is broken. Britain's two-party system needs to be shaken up. This messy Brexit process is the clearest example of this. Change UK wants Britain to stay in the EU. It's a mix of defectors from the Conservatives and Labour. Spokesman Chugga Vermuna is a former leading Labour member of Parliament. We are not seeking to set the wealthy in this country against people who are not so wealthy. We are not trying to seek to set the people in this region against people in London or in any other region. We are not seeking to set different ethnicities, nationalities and religions against each other because we know ultimately you will not do anything but fail. We are fighting for ourselves. She's a conservative, this blonde woman. But what's she doing with the Labour people? The futures of our children and for our grandchildren. Former Cabinet Minister Anna Soubry is a Conservative defector to Change UK and one of the most vocal opponents of Brexit. 
she accuses the Conservatives of turning further to the right and Labour of becoming socialist extremists. The majority of people in our country, frankly, find that nobody genuinely and absolutely represents them. And this is about trying to do things differently. It's also giving people who occupy that sensible, moderate, centrist, but progressive ground a place to come and join us and to change British politics. But Change UK is floundering in the polls. Nigel Farage says this is indicative of dissatisfaction with mainstream politicians. I think that we're seeing a sea change in politics across the entire Western world. Uh, and I think that's the big pattern we've seen with Brexit, with Trump in America, with the wholesale change in Italy. Uh, and I think we're now at a point where the two-party structure in Britain is under threat in a way it's not been since the end of the First World War. Back in southern England at the May Fair, local mayor Chris Funnell is bracing himself for the impact that this wrecking ball of an election will have on his Conservative Party. I think we've proven um, over time that we, we do adapt. Um, this, is, this is one that's going to go down in history, uh, where we're going to have to prove that we can adapt to one of the biggest changes that we've ever seen. Britons may express their frustration this coming Thursday, but the slow train out of the European Union will be no closer to reaching its destination. Ah, what, a, what a shamble we are living in, in this world. Absolute shamble. What did one say? I think this is it in the, for this video, guys. Hope you all enjoyed it. Please like, comment, subscribe, share these videos with your friends. And tell me what you think about this. Should we stay in the EU or should we leave? I reckon we should leave and get out while we can with the EU. But they're not listening to us. Thank you for joining me. And I'll catch you on the next one. Peace. See you later, guys. Peace.